The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the importance of injuries that have been caused on individuals by gravitational potential energy, and these injuries are as follows, falling on the same level, and falling to a lower level, and having an object fall on them from above. Falling on the same level is almost always preceded by slips, trips, and missteps. The loss of balance associates with any of these three causes results in sudden movement and a release in energy that can cause serious injury such as slip which is defined as loss of friction between foot and walking surface trips which is defined as the path of the foot is obstructed or blocked by an object and finally misstep is defined as the foot is placed in the area where there was thought to be support but there isn't. Moving on to falling to a lower level is falling to a lower level is typically preceded by the same causes, but the fall is much higher. The difference is high causes an increase in energy release and an increase in severity of the injury. Finally, an object falling from above can usually be attributed to human error. Unsecured tools, equipment, and materials can be dropped or moved from their secure locations, allowing the release of the energy. Both the height and the mass of the object, as well as as the protective equipment worn by the worker will affect the severity of the injury. As mentioned, the cause of these injuries are from gravitational potential energy. And gravitational potential energy is the potential energy held by an object because of its high position compared to a lower position. In other words, it is the process described by when an object is lifted from the ground, energy is then created and stored in the object's gravitational field. This is modeled by the following equation for potential energy, which is the multiplication of the object's mass with its acceleration due to Earth's gravity with the object's height. The acceleration due to Earth's gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Gravitational energy is always present on a construction job site. This includes workers on both ground and at height, workers with tools, equipment, and materials as well. Any object with a gravitational center above the Earth's surface has stored potential energy. This can be released in the number of ways mentioned previously in the video. Now, this pie chart represents the distribution of leading causes of fatalities in construction. From this pie chart, it is important to notice the f that the fatalities from falls are the greatest and they are at 33%. When looking more in depth in the fatalities caused by falls, we will see the following pie chart. And in this pie chart, most of these fatalities are from individuals falling from roofs, ladders, or scaffolds. And now, we will look at this pie chart, which, which represents the distribution of leading causes of non-fatal injuries in construction. From this pie chart, it is important to notice that the injuries from falls are at 24%, and that the number of non-fatalities are more than the number of fatalities. So thus, we will be looking more into the non-fatality injuries in construction from falls. And now, when looking in depth in these injuries from falls, we will see that the majority of the injuries come from the same level falls at 39.5%. When these injuries occur, the body responds in one of two ways, and these are absorption or deformation. Every construction worker is at risk of gravity-related injury. These can come in all forms from a minor cut to a broken bone on any part of the body. We will now preview a live demonstration which is set up based on the compression of stored potential energy between gravity and a compressing of a spring. Using a spring, it allows us to enhance a visual understanding of the storing and releasing of gravitational energy. This video is shown in real time. We will now replay the same video in a slower motion. The science and physics behind the demonstration we just previewed is simple with these equations. So from these equations, we can easily calculate the distance needed to compress the spring by choosing a mass and a height to represent plunging in the spring constant. For instance, a 75 
kilogram person, which is about 165 pounds, at a height of 2 meters, represents about 1,470 joules of potential energy. To achieve this energy, we used our spring, and our spring has a constant of 12.5 pounds per inch. Therefore, we would need to compress the spring about 45.6 inches to represent this energy. Because the spring itself is only 5.5 inches, we use a 120th of a scale down, meaning the spring is compressed 2.28 inches to represent the 1,470 joules of energy. To represent a human bone, we will be looking for materials appropriately scaled down to the size of the model. We decided to use balsa wood, which is a sheer strength of about 450 psi compared to a human femur that has a sheer strength of about 9,500 psi. And finally, personal protective equipment should be worn at all times. For instance, steel toe boots will prevent foot injuries, while hard hats will prevent head injuries. But personal protective equipment on its own is never enough when it comes to gravitational potential energy. On every job site, there are a number of activities to be done, and different activities require different tools, and these different tools cause different damages. The solution is simple. One, make sure you're wearing your personal protective equipment at all times. Before starting work, make sure you complete a field-level risk assessment. Three, make sure you inspect all and any equipment that you will be using. Four, make sure you set up a barrier around the area of work. Five, communicate with workers around you. Six, be aware of surroundings, example placement of materials to avoid any trips or slips. Seven, make sure all tools and materials are secured before going up. Thank you for your time and we hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you stay safe.